Mary Lockwood, like the others at Money Rehab here in Tennessee, has deeply ingrained beliefs about money. We all do. Money buys power, love, happiness. I want you to imagine, you now have all the money. But right now, the question for the group is, you have 24 hours to live. What are your unfulfilled dreams and goals? List as many things as you possibly can. I had never been asked, what are your dreams? What are your goals? What do you want to be when you grow up? I just melted and I could not do the assignment. For Mary, her overspending was easily traced to traumatic memories from childhood. We'd go garbage picking, and that's what we would do for a night out with the family, and go to the ritzy neighborhoods and pick up other people's garbage, like TVs or washing machines, or my dad could fix it. My mental money script at that point in my life was, I will never, ever get anything used. It, I and her determination to never buy things used led to a life of debilitating attraction to all things shiny and new. When I was a little girl, um, I was probably four or five, and. And my mother said to me over and over again, I never had any good shoes, so you're going to have some good shoes. Okay, so we went to the shoe store, and um, she bought me these good shoes. They were the ugliest effing shoes I've ever <laughs> seen in my life. Damn it, but they're good shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she made me wear these shoes to school. I'm always profoundly moved by the way children experience, like, uh, what we would call normal everyday events. And Ted Klontz believes that unresolved traumatic childhood events can end up triggering money disorders. When there's a hole here in the wallet, there's a hole here in the heart. But it's not just emotional coaching. Onsite also provides basic information about stocks, bonds, investments. Financial advisor Rick Kaler is there to teach, but is forbidden ethically from offering any personal financial advice. I can show them all day that they're going to be broke in 10 years, and it's not going to affect the behavior. If going to your financial planner doesn't fix it, then we're looking at some kind of history. And until that history is uncovered and discovered, then there won't be any changes. Nikki, our shopaholic from Wisconsin, began making connections between her designer gene addiction that's bankrupting her family and her childhood insecurity. My best friend in grade school got all of the name brand things. I remember her wearing these things to school and just wanting them. So I remember trying to convince my parents to buy me those guest jeans, to buy me that t-shirt. I remember saying, when I get a credit card, when I get older, I'm, I'm going to buy nice things. The talk therapy sessions allowed her to remember how money became a key, twisted ingredient in a teenage romance. About two years into the relationship, he cheated on me. And I wanted the relationship to be over. But for him, he wanted to buy my affection back. So he took out a credit card, bought me pretty much whatever I wanted. And eventually, in my mind, that became the norm. And now, like, what people don't buy me, I buy myself, so it's like... <laughs> but Nikki's biggest breakthrough was still to come. Meanwhile, others, like Will Stein, the guy driven to keep up with the Joneses, began to piece together early memories for how him, money, buys status. The members only jacket was a very important status symbol. And when I came home to talk to my very thrifty um, mother, wonderful dear soul that she is, uh, and tried to explain the situation in, a, in, in only a fashion 11 year old can, she did what she thought was the solution, and that was to, to go get a knockoff. Can't put that on and go to the bus stop and wait. Those kids are going to laugh at me and they're going to make fun of me. Like, Come on, bro. What you got? As an adult, Will drives a fancy SUV, has a big house. And yet, even though the bad economy threatens his lifestyle, he still feels the pressure to move up the status ladder. And remember financially dependent Joe Ellen, the former flight attendant? She says she often flashes back to her childhood. I remember there was a new girl in school, and I lived in a very small town. She said, oh, 
You're the girl whose mom is having... It was just mean-spirited gossip about her family and money. But the shame she felt set her on a collision course with money trouble. She suffered from financial egotism, acting richer than she was. Dishonest about money growing up to the point of stealing from her own family. I would steal $100 out of my granddaddy's wallet. And today, Joe Ellen worries excessively about losing her house, helplessly at the mercy of her ex-husband. A way to do that. Ted Klontz hopes the workshop will help her see her own strengths. Just being meeting all of you guys. She has incredible um, abilities and capabilities, but she doesn't believe that. She yeah. discounts herself. Yeah. Grant means serenity. On the fifth day of the workshop, Nikki made a startling discovery. It started as she drew her money egg, a diagram of early life experiences. One of the things that she mentioned in that egg was, well, I guess I would have to start at birth. My mom and dad walked away from me. At birth, Nikki had been abandoned by her teenage mother and sent to an orphanage. She was premature, ill, and required some surgery. Ted Klontz had her role play the trauma in a private session. The way he put it is that, how would you feel for nine weeks of your infant life not being held or touched, hooked up to machines, poked, prodded, having surgery when you're an infant when all you really want to be is held and nurtured? And the door from there, I can't even tell you. I don't think I've cried so hard in my life. So does money equal love for her? Yes. And so Nikki healed a wound she didn't even know she had. Every time I feel lonely or I feel a sense of rejection, every time I feel abandoned, I shop. There's always that void, and I, it's been there my whole life. All the graduates say they're taking home a simple yet powerful new understanding of what drives their bad relationships with money. Joellen plans to rely less on her ex-husband and complete her studies as a dental hygienist. And when he got home, Will and his wife decided to make a budget. And Nikki? My old money script was, I don't own money, money owns me. My new money script is, I have a brand new relationship with money, and damn it feels good.